Hey everyone, at the end of lecture, I promised some additional notes talking about. Hey everyone, at the end of lecture, I promised I'd do an additional short segment on how the ideas of multi core processing, SIMD processing, multi threaded execution, and superscalar all appear in a modern GPU. So I decided to pull the, the V100. It's a very well documented GPU online. You can go rent one from the major cloud providers these days. And NVIDIA likes to call the basic unit of replicated processing the SM, or the streaming multiprocessor. So I'm going to try and use that terminology in the segment here today. So the full GPU has about it has 80 of these SMs in it, and those 80 SMs are connected to a shared uh, last level cache as well as a big honking wide memory bu uh, bus to high bandwidth HBM memory. Now, if we zoom into one of these cores and actually zoom in past the core, let's take a look at part of one of these SMs right now, the, the SM subcore. And if you look at this, it looks you know, a little bit like some of the diagrams we saw in lecture. We have a single instruction fetch and decode unit. I'm still call, uh, coloring it orange like from lecture. We have a bank of SIMD floating point uh, FP32 ALUs. Those are what I'm showing you here in the light orange and yellow. Uh, and we have a bunch of execution context for hardware threads down at the bottom. Now this diagram, I added a few more execution uh, unit boxes just to illustrate that there are additional uh, SIMD ALUs that are there for integer 32-bit math or double precision floating point, as well as additional units in the, the SM subcore that I'm not going to talk about that are for specialized processing like for graphics, or very importantly these days, the ML tensor cores for ML acceleration. Okay, so let's dig into the execution contexts of this multi-threaded subcore. And here in this diagram, I'm illustrating per thread execution context. So this little red box that I'm showing you here is a set of scalar registers. So you know R0, R1, and so and so. And this is a multi-threaded chip, so there is support for multiple execution contexts. Now one big difference between some of the ideas that we talked about in class and what I'm showing you here is that on the V100 SM, these execution contexts, which don't contain vector registers, they just contain scalar registers, are organized into groups of 32 execution contexts that NVIDIA calls warps. So I'm drawing a box around 32 consecutive execution contexts. And if you're familiar with writing CUDA programs on the GPU, you are familiar with the concept of CUDA threads and CUDA thread blocks. So in a CUDA thread block, consecutive numbered CUDA threads will be mapped by the NVIDIA implementation to consecutive execution contexts. So a CUDA thread block in your program, if it has 256 CUDA threads, that's going to map to eight warps in the underlying hardware. And that each subcore of the NVIDIA V100 has the ability to schedule and manage 16 different warps worth of execution context. So if you're counting that 16 warps times 32 CUDA threads per warp, uh, that's, that's quite a few. That's 512 execution context in this subcore. So there's 16 uh, warp execution context here. There's actually four of these subcores in the entire SM. So I just replicated everything four times. And these four subcores share some common storage like uh, Scratchpad sh shared memory or the L1 cache. So this is one NVIDIA SM unit that I have on this slide. Overall, there are 64 warps of execution context um, interleaved among the various slices. That's a total of 2,000 total CUDA threads per SM in max latency hiding configuration. And those threads have access to about 96 kilobytes of on-chip shared memory. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So the main idea of these warps is that threads in a warp get executed in a SIMD manner if they share the next instruction. If all of those PCs for all 32 threads are the same 
or executing the same operation, then an NVIDIA chip will execute these uh, completely different threads all together in lockstep on this bank of SIMD ALUs. This is what NVIDIA calls SIMT. And they call it SIMT to differentiate from SIMD because unlike what we talked about in lecture, which was very CPU centric, here it's the hardware itself that's taking a look at these different program counters, determining when they're all in the same spot, and determining when up to 32 of these CUDA threads can be executed simultaneously <coughs> on the, uh, the, uh, the ALUs. So this is an implementation detail. This is not something that you compile GPU code to. This is not something that you necessarily write code to in your CUDA programs. Okay. Now, those of you that are looking kind of carefully might be going, wait a minute, why is he talking about 32 wide SIMD execution when I only see 16 boxes here for the uh, floating point ALUs? And that's because the NVIDIA GPU is actually going to execute a warp, an instruction for an entire warp of CUDA threads over two clocks on the 16 ALUs that you see here. So for example, imagine a program, a CUDA program that had one FP32 op, then an INT32 op, then an FP32 op. Well, you can think about these being pipelined and each operation taking two clocks on those ALUs. So that first instruction might start at, at clock zero, we'll do the fetch, and then over the next two clocks, you'll see that FP32 operation um, uh, be carried out. Next clock, we can go ahead and decode the next instruction. Hey, look, that's an integer operation. It can get dispatched to a different set of execution units. And so we can decode an instruction once per clock and dispatch those instructions to the various execution capabilities in the subcore, but any one operation does take two cycles to complete for an entire warp. Okay, that's a quick dive into how this uh, V100 SM core operates. Hopefully that was helpful.